Dan, and Chase. So uh, just to kind of kick things off, guys, what do you, you know, when you, when you look at, uh, you know, this, this wide world of blockchain that's merging here with, this, with the entertainment uh, industry, you know, how do you see, you know, blockchain in general impacting the entertainment industry as a whole here uh, in the next five years? What, how, how do you guys see that in your, in your eyes? You want to start, Chase? You know, I think that uh, my expertise is going to fall a little bit different part of this, so I'm going to pass this down the line. Like All right, I'm sure. Right in our case, blockchain has delivered every single bit of the promise. Uh, we essentially took a very famous and loved sport, fantasy sports. We started on that platform actually before we integrated uh, a coin, and we've seen how it's been embraced by people, not just in the United States, but people from all over the world. So essentially, all these people that are playing our platforms from over 50 different countries now using a single currency, no limit coin, which we developed specifically for gaming, instant transfer, no cost, and we see it nothing but growth. But we have to bridge that divide between the crypto sphere and the regular sphere, and that's where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. We need to bridge. We need to go from the crypto world out to the regular world and bring people into our uh, crypto sphere and start getting them comfortable with crypto in all the different applications. In our case, it's fantasy sports, it's online poker, it's many other uh, gaming applications that we are developing. Yeah, so do you, do you think that, um, you know, the, the drive for people to want to have, uh, um, you know, their, their own easy platform to use globally where they're, they're, it's, easy, it's a, a liquid platform for them to come in to, to do a fantasy sport like football, because that's a very popular thing in the United States to, to do fantasy football. I think that, you know, something like that is a mainstream use case that people can get into it and they can, you know, but they can, they can do it and compete with people across the globe versus it being something that's done in fiat and they're using your own token. Do you think that's something that is going to, uh, that application itself is going to really help the industry grow over the next five years because you kind of connected yourself to a sport that is actually really popular and something that people do uh, quite often. Sure, I mean, we started with NFL, but now we've got the right. whole set. In one year, we went from just having NFL to soccer, NFL, hockey, MLB, even a game that we, we allow you to put together a, a team, so to speak, of crypto, and then you compete against other people. We call it fantasy crypto. We've got esports coming up, MMA and cricket, which is viewed by more people than the Super Bowl. So really, blockchain has allowed us to do that, I mean, because we were just stuck in the U.S. market, competing against all the forces against you. Moving money is so hard with credit cards and banks. Yeah. And suddenly, crypto just broke everything down and opened up the whole world for us. Mm -hmm. I just think for blockchain for gaming, gaming, not just like video gaming, but actual right. casino gaming. Yeah. For me, you know, we used to have one of the biggest focuses in the world, and the hardest part was making people feel comfortable about cheating. With blockchain, it removes, all, it basically perfects things for us. So we can provide somebody, I don't run the poker site anymore, obviously, but we can provide somebody with a platform that, that can remove that from the back of their heads, and also, Bitcoin itself has become very prevalent in online gaming because it's been one of the easiest and fastest ways to deposit money onto these onto these sites right. and also to get money off. I mean, we were using Bitcoin five, six, seven, eight years ago, and 
2011, 2012, 2013, when it was nothing, it was $7, $700, $200 in those price ranges. We were using Bitcoin back then because it was just something that was fast and easy. And it's always been so difficult to get money online in the casino space, the online poker space. It's been so difficult because PayPal turns you down, Visa hates right. you. Like, Nobody wants to work with it, you know, yeah, so, so, you know, Bitcoin or using cryptos makes it a lot liquid and makes it easier for you to, to, to get it there's out. Some, there's some poker sites that only use crypto. Yeah, that's definitely true. So do you feel that, uh, you know, mainstream games like that are going to be kind of the, the, the mainstream entry for people coming in, like their, their first, you know, uh, exposure to crypto? Somebody who's not a trader, somebody who's not necessarily into uh, some of these other major projects that, you know, some of us kind of geek out on, you know, but, but people who are just, you know, uh, love to gamble. Do you think that's really something that's going to bring more yeah. blend over the next five years? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been happening for half, literally half a decade. Yeah. And it's mostly because we just don't have a lot of choices in the online gaming space. There just isn't a lot of options. And the reason that poker sites fail, the reason that sports betting is hard, the reason that online casino is hard is getting money online. Same thing with cannabis yeah. space. The biggest hurdle for cannabis is getting money online and for them to even accept money. Yeah. The reason that these cannabis companies can't go deposit 30 grand a day in, in 20s into Wells Fargo is Wells Fargo doesn't want $30,000 a day in 20s. Well, you mean they don't want their, their weed money? They don't want to have to take all those dollar bills in? <laughs> even though it's, yeah, Visa and MasterCard. Yeah. Just, right. Well, they have a stranglehold on the whole market. And it's taken us a long time to finally put in a Visa and MasterCard gateway. So now people can come to our website, our game, and buy right in without even knowing that it's crypto. Mm -hmm. It just says buy in for fifty dollars, swipe, boom. Right. And there's an outside around that the same way. You know, like merchant processing is literally the hardest sphere in the world to yeah. yeah. Most people don't understand like the true epidemic that is banking. And it's you know, the banks are hard, hard enough, but the process of uh, Visa and MasterCard yeah. make things almost impossible in every spectrum, yeah. especially when it's new or high paced or a lot of money involved, solely because they're trying to build fees and structures to police it. And believe it or not, they make more money policing it and mm -hmm. all of the negativity that comes from it than they do processing it. That's why they right. don't really want the change. The uh, fees, chargebacks, things that go with it are actually very, very lucrative the business. That where crypto and yeah, all like it's Chase, Chase did over 160 million revenue last year. He would have done three or four or five hundred million revenue if he wasn't having so many conflicts with right. the banks. Right. There's right. just so many declines because they're just always like battling for people to just be able to spend their money. Uh, on top of the fact that you're paying, you, you know, pretty high fees, you're taking credit cards high online. Fees, they, retain, they retain a certain percentage, then the charge back. And by the time you get your money, you know, weeks have passed. So, I mean, that's when you want to have them, but at the same time you say, man, I'm glad I'm in crypto one of these days, I'm not going to need them. And when we just started, we, we, one of the main things that I feel about gaming is you need to have an instant transfer coin yeah. and a coin that costs basically sub a penny to move because people still mine costs. Mm -hmm. Even, I mean, we love the tokens, but you know, when you have to pay to move a token, it's an issue. People. You know, gamblers love to gamble. They're willing to lose everything on the gambling. But when it comes to, to fees, they don't want to lose anything. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, already, you're already taking the risk. Not for they lose you money. Do so, right? Yeah. <laughs> Good. You make a really great point there. And something you said earlier about your platform, where you know you can come to your platform, you can put uh, yeah, your your swipe your card right there, and the the, the transaction itself is seamless. They, they, you're not buying tokens. No. You're just buying into the platform and to play the game that you want to play, or, or to do you know the, the the you know to get the poker game, or you know to gamble the way you want to do it. And the tokens are, are done in the background. I think that's one of those things that we're going to see, you know, over here in the next five years. More and more UI changes where you know things are tokenized, and but they're not done in a way where it's incredibly obvious. It's just it seems like a natural process that you're getting on there, and, and they may not even know that necessarily that they're using a tokenized gaming platform. You know, and you know, people. One of the things that I'm most proud of is when people tell me, you know what, I wasn't into crypto before we got to your game. Now I understand it. I right. like it. It's great, and, and that's yeah. And that, that's kind of what Speaks was saying before about you know, well, what what can we do to push it off here in the next five years? And I think gaming really does that because it gives it gives people this this incentive, like you know, if you can do it in a way where uh, you incorporate blockchain or tokens into a, into a game where the gameplay is is amazing and seamless, 
and then they get exposed to crypto at the same time, uh, that, I think that is a great first impression for a lot of people. My competitors, they're 10 to 12 points behind when the dollar hits their platform. I mean, they eat it, and they have to make it back up through fees. With crypto, you're reducing fees by 95, 97%. So right there, you're already way ahead of the game. Then you have to basically you know, develop your business and expand it and exploit it. And there's still a bridge to, to cross and it's still a divide and people still feel uneasy about crypto. So we do have a big task, but you know, we've got a deployed operational platform with 500 nodes, proof of stake, and we see growth before our eyes and it's very exciting. Yeah. Very cool. So, um, you know, kind of uh, segueing off of that, what what do you guys see here that you're excited about in the space right now that has to do about gaming? You know, not necessarily what where we're going in the future or where things are going to be, but what, what actually is happening right now that you guys see that is actually an exciting element that, that has a lot of potential? I feel like it's one reason that wasn't deep as shit at Prime. So like people still have faith in it. You know, gamification, the human emotions of challenge will always be there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the best companies in the world have you know, gamify their platform to get more use cases on it, to get more people involved. I think it takes the mindset almost off of cryptocurrency and shows us a use case as it's happening, be like, oh shit, I'm using crypto right now. This yeah. is all happening versus like it being pounded down because you have to understand we're kind of in this, you know, as we plateaued up and came back down, people have this uh, assembly of like, is crypto good? Is it bad? What should I do with it? How should I play with it? So. The idea of kind of like more nurturing the relationship, saying, hey, you're having a great time, and also look what's happening. Right. You're doing it in this platform, and it was easier, and holy shit, it worked. And now you're seeing the excitement come back to people, and they're seeing reality from it. Instead of just being like, give me 10 grand or put 10 grand or something, when's my Lambo coming? You right. see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. That ideology, I think, is really a positive thing to it. And honestly, the idea of challenge is probably the smartest way you can build anything. If you want two people to get involved in something, challenge them. Right. In any act of fact, I mean, human nature is to compete whether you like it or not. Your body is competing against the person right next to you, the person behind you, and every person in life. So when you give people the option to do that, again, you've taken their mind state away from where you're at, and they're focusing on something better. I, I think it's the perfect way to bring things into market because it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. And now it becomes like, we need this to be there because we've been using it for so long. Oh my God, look at this. Right, and so they're focusing on the gamification, they're focusing on, on the experience of it and not necessarily on what's what's transpiring behind, but then they still get the exposure. Correct, and they get to look into it being like, oh, I didn't think about this. I thought, you know, cryptocurrency was something that I see here and there that people invest in. Oh my God, I'm using it. Like we need more people using it because you need the mom and pops. You need the people in the right down the center of the country to understand what's going on. I and mean, when you're in these hubs and places like this, you kind of are on the cusp of it. So we all know and understand it's going to take some time. But for someone who doesn't know that, this idea of showing real use changes people's perception on the future. I and mean, you want something to evolve, perception needs to change always and in every market continually. Yeah, and I think, you know, gaming, that's one of the biggest use cases I see right now when you talk about like actual use cases for crypto, where we're using it, what what makes people want to use it. Yep. Um, I feel like, you know, there's a whole uh, large market out there for, for gaming. So we, we've talked a lot about uh, like kind of gambling focused gaming, right? Uh, but in general, you know, the esports market is, is a massive market. You know, there there's a, it's a, it's a billion dollar industry that you know, people have switched this mind mentality where you know, 10 years ago, maybe you asked a kid, like, well, what, what do you want to be? And they're like, oh, I want to be a football player. Yeah. I want to be a basketball star. And now you ask a kid now, what do they want to be? They want to be an esports gamer. Yeah. They want to be in the, big, in the big arena where there's, you know, everyone's sitting around and they're sitting on a computer and they're just, just pounding away, you know? And so I, I think that, you know, through gaming is, is, is uh, also where we're going to see younger generation come in through this too, because that is something that has, you know, not only taken a younger generation by storm, but you see everyone sitting around all the time on their cell phones anyways, and they got, what are they doing, mobile games? Playing Farmville, playing some other game on, on their phone. And so I think that, you know, those types of things really give us a, a, an intro into, into gaming, and, um, you know, it, it, it really makes a, a good use case, I think, for what, what's going on now. You, you guys, uh, is there anything else you guys are, are, are like excited about what's happening now? I mean, the... Well, you know, we're, we're right on the edge of esports. I mean, we've got the feeds on, we're working on them. We understand that esports is huge and we want to participate because we see it 
as a great way to expose crypto to a whole sector, a young right. sector that eventually will grow up with your crypto. So you've got to get them young and early, get them to know your crypto. And another exciting thing, at least for our company and in terms of gaming, is the recent Supreme Court decision to allow states to uh, legalize and, and, and uh, operate online sports. So right. a few of our competitors are already doing deals with land-based casinos. We're going to be chasing those. And you know, after one year, I mean, we're announcing next week, which is kind of a, a something that we haven't talked about. But next week, I mean, the the, the the credit card gateway, which took us so long because of the problems that I guess hurdles, but they're slowly warming up, mm -hmm. and we're gonna have that gateway both for poker and fantasy sports. We're very excited about that, and again, it's it's a great time for crypto, so people can't confuse. The fact that, yes, the price had to come down a little bit, stabilize with the usefulness and the solutions that blockchain brings. I mean, nothing has changed. Blockchain is solving many problems, reducing costs of moving money into the platforms by 97%, you know, allowing us to operate uh, at a third or a fourth of what our competitors do in fees and make money at it. So all those things are happening to us in the real world. It's a real ecosystem that's operating and deployed, and we just can't wait to get esports and NMA and even cricket. Right, we're putting it out this year. Yeah. So what about you, Daniel? Is there anything outside of maybe the gaming or the the you know gambling realm that you're excited for in the gaming or entertainment industry that's kind of happening right now? Yeah, I mean the main thing is it's just how much better technology is getting to make people more comfortable. Because for me, you know, I've been doing this since 2014 installing the very first Bitcoin ATM into America and trying to convince people to use an ATM to buy Bitcoin. Yeah, it's hard. It's half a decade later and it's still not comfortable for people to just buy Bitcoin or buy any crypto. And the technology is compounding faster and how much better it's getting. Mm -hmm. Meaning, you look at it, 10 years ago, we didn't, what does that mean? 10 years ago, we didn't have an iPhone. We didn't have most social media networks. We didn't have Postmates, Lyft, Uber, all these things. Nowadays, in these last 10 years, it's like hundreds of years of technology. Exponential. But now, the next 10 years, or really the next three years, will be like the last 10 years on steroids. Yeah. And so just the fact that we have hundreds of billions of dollars that's been poured into the cryptocurrency space, lots and lots of hedge funds that finally got in, lots of zillionaires and billionaires, besides the fact that tens of millions of the masses have come in. Mm -hmm. Just the fact that so much money, so much smart people, people have left their jobs to create careers in the cryptocurrency space, in the blockchain space, that's the most compelling part to me is, it's still gonna take them a couple of years to, to work. Just because they got $30 million in their ICO or they got $100 million in their fund, just because they got that money, well, they gotta go, go build those things. Mm -hmm. Now, all that money came in a year and a half ago, a year ago. So now, 2019, 2020, and 21, now we'll start seeing those companies that got 38 million two years ago start coming out with what they were doing. Yeah. No, that's a good point. And so, you know, I think that we see we've seen some of those companies here, particularly, you know, when I, when I come back to a focus on on like more traditional gaming aspects, uh, you know, Engine has been one of my favorite projects as far as um, them being able to put out tools and things that really are going to help with that kind of development of the game industry, uh, meeting that kind of crux of blockchain. And so, you know, I, I don't know what experience you guys have with uh, actual like blockchain based games or gaming, but uh, you know, in general, you know, we're, we're looking at kind of, um, you know, this, this uh, revolution in, in being able to um, own your own digital assets. So if you look at places like uh, uh, off skins where you can sell your digital skins online for games and, and you actually, you know, can own those now. And so they're, getting, they're moving towards this model where you know, it's actually uh, um, you know put on the blockchain. You physically own that item, or you know digitally own that item, and then you can then go sell that item. And so, so you know, you, you have this kind of revolution of, of also you know in, in traditional gaming where um, you can monetize the, the time that you're spending in games as well. So whereas you can, you you've been able to do that obviously in, in, in like gambling platforms where you're playing fantasy sports, you're putting time into it, and you have an ability to kind of you know uh, have somehow monetize that. Uh, I feel like that's also coming to to uh, to traditional gaming as well. But how do you guys feel about it? Do you guys know it, uh, much about how, how that works or, or like NFTs in general? I don't follow too much, but I always think of like Fortnite. Yeah. How much sold. Imagine if you could build a market, like a secondary marketplace for that. If there is, again, I'm not 
Who play? I have young daughters instead of sons, unfortunately. So they don't like the game as much. Well, they're not playing Fortnite. They, 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 they do dances though. Do they do the dances? They do all the dances and stuff. But, but I always thought that there's like, uh, you know, they give an idea for secondary markets. You know, I come from the trading world. I love the idea of secondary markets, mm -hmm. people to people, yeah. because it's like reality. But you know, I come from a world of algorithms, trading markets, and it's not people anymore. It's a computer program. So right. it makes it very um, jaded and one-sided. So the secondary markets are pretty unique in the sense that two people can decide something. And this is where it's going. I mean, what were they just saying? That like Sears and all these companies went down, Fortnite sold like three billion in online digital clothes. Yep. So imagine a market to be tokenized in that, and you built like an entire secondary market that's just curated by massive volume. So, I mean, I truly believe once we kind of like get the stink off, and listen, the stink was caused by our own, our own ease of use. I always make things like Coinbase, which is a phenomenal piece of software, but that ease of use was also ease of demise. It made people believe how easy it was to get and it must be this easy to right. money. Yeah. Um, so I, I truly believe this will be one of the sectors that leads the way on our kind of way out of uh, the pasture, they say. Good point. Yeah, yeah we're moving into the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, betting space that will eventually lead to a decentralized, but we have to be careful when it comes to gambling. We don't just want to put it out there and not have any control over it. Sure. And certainly what you're talking about is one area that is very interesting. It started with Second Live, then Fortnite, and so forth. So there's a lot of areas. You've got the DAFs, you've got the, the delegated proof of stake chains, you've got all the other chains. And in our case, we're doing a 20 million raise this year through equity, which is a, a, a testament to what we're doing because our investors see us as the trifecta, online, gaming, crypto. Right. And we see it as, as, as a proof of, not just a proof of concept, but proof that we can get funded not just through the ICOs, but actually through equity, which is gonna allow us to go up against the big boys and really get out of the beta stage. Because we've been in beta a couple of years, we've done everything we need to do, Money flows in and out frictionless. Millions of coins go in, go out. Everybody just is amazed at how fast that happens. That's why we have to build our own coin. And you know, if anybody signs up for Crypto Fantasy Sports today, use CIS 2019, and it'll give you a thousand free coins. <laughs> I just have to plug that. I chill. <laughs> <laughs> So what, what, what do you think about yeah, what, what do you think about like digital value like that, how we value things that, that can maybe be in-game items? So it's one of the most kind of what Jay said about Fortnite selling billions of dollars. For us in video game space and in casino game space, digital currency or digital goods has one of the craziest values possible. And for the company itself, for the business, they're selling air. Meaning they're selling something that costs them nothing, they have no product to ship. Nothing to do. Well, I mean, I would say it costs nothing, but yeah, I mean, there's still the time to produce well, something that asks. Once you've made it, it costs yeah. nothing. Yes, yeah, exactly. Because yeah. you're making it regardless. Yep. Once you've made it, whether you sell four little uh, ribbons or you sell six million ribbons, it's the exact same cost overhead structure for the companies themselves. So digital goods has always been a humongous market. Now it's just becoming easier and easier and easier because of the blockchain. What's well, gonna to have to happen again, the big guys, the big companies are gonna to have to adopt it. Mm -hmm. So until EA Sports or the producers of Fortnite and these type of games, until they do it, it's just not gonna have any real true bearing on the space. We need one of the major players to use it. Once they do it, everybody else will fall in line. Sure. Yeah, and I mean, I think that you make a good point there when you talk about mainstream being a mainstream audience. You know, right now, um, you know, if you really look at the the blockchain gaming space. There are uh, actually a lot of really great projects. There's a lot of people that are in the space that are they're, they're you know um, you know playing these blockchain games or developing some of these these, these uh, you know solely blockchain based games. Uh, one that I'm like I'm beta testing right now, which is a really popular one, is a trading card game called Gods Unchained, and it's similar to like a Magic the Gathering. If you guys know that kind of old school card game, or or Hearthstone, which is also a very popular one. But you know. Um, a lot of times I think that you know we, we look to some of these larger institutions as being kind of the gateway for everything to be mainstream, but I'm also a proponent, I think, of, of the underdog, as it were, 
seeing that, hey, you know, well, maybe while these guys are doing their model, there, there's, always, there's always that opportunity for the underdog to come up with something that's going to be radically better that people are going to want to flock to anyways. And I think we've seen that in the gaming industry where people say, okay, well, I've been playing online poker for a long time. But it's been hard to be able to get my money in and out. It's hard to be able to, to take transactions. And now we come across some of this, you know, a, a significant improvement in liquidity on a platform like that. And so why would we, you know, use that instead of, oh, well, I'm, no, I'm going to wait until the big guys, I'm going to wait until the big guys to get into the, the industry, and then that's when it's going to be a major. I mean, that's when everyone's going to start using it. So I think that I think we're 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 at a point with blockchain technology that we, we want to make sure that it's uh, you know it's not just keeping that old guard in place. But it's also giving opportunity for a new paradigm to, to be able to come to the surface as well. I agree with that 100. percent The problem I think that is uh, we're doing bad. We lost it. There you go. Um, it's just trust. You know, like the one big thing it, it, here is that a lot of trust has been lost. Yes. And like you know, I always say this in business: you need to trust someone to do business, and once you're good, that's how you stick with them. So, like he's saying, the big dogs need to come in just because. The world needs some sort of spaces saying, okay, someone with right. real pull trusted. Because, I mean, listen, we've been doing crypto and messing with these coins for forever. Right. I mean, they all have use cases if you really think about it in some really interesting ways. But the world is it has to be adopted to be utilized in a way that people all acknowledge to be safe. Mm -hmm. So, like, what I like right now is that there's a secondary measure. It's another means that you can transact. So it's like right. giving you maybe a golden parachute or a plan B or a second measure. Yeah, well, and in time, that plan B, if it proves to be better, more trustworthy, ease of use, it will just by natural selection take over plan A. I mean, gold, dollar, derivative swaps. I mean, this has been the telltale sign of, of all time. The problem is, is the real problem I see is the nefarious characters that get their hands on the money, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. they have grand ideas and so many new people have been sold on such beautiful propositions and then basically fairy dust. Why come. paper to dream, man? Listen, you I know, mean, you can ask us, we invested in how many ICOs? Zero. Because it's just, you know, I looked at the idea of just, it was so fast and so uneducated. Even for the people that were phenomenal, it was hard for them to stand out in all of the sea of crap. It was. So yeah. we, I really like Randy's idea that we need someone big, or we just need a proponent to constantly fight the fight and stand ahead of it and show constant transparency, right. constant follow through. Because yet no one has. Even you're like the newest guys in the game that everyone's trying, but we need like longevity. Yeah. When you really think about it, I mean, being a degenerate gambler myself, it's like I trust certain establishments because I know that, yeah, no matter what. Go to my website. Exactly. <laughs> but no matter what, it's like if I if I go to the win and I play, I know if I win two million bucks, I'm going to get two million dollars. There's right. not. So it's it's this idea of is it all going to happen? Is it yeah. going to transpire? Because that's like it was, if the win accepted Bitcoin, all the other casinos would jump in. Correct. So right, right now, the little casinos are doing it. The, they're fighting the good fight, yep. but they're getting 600 people a day coming through. The win has 75,000 people a day walking through. And being a gambler, I would love that. I and mean, how many times have we rolled into Las Vegas at two in the morning on a Saturday, and I have no way to get money to anywhere? Like, please, by all means, let me take out have to use money. Can, can you scan my QR code? Exactly. Like, on this? Yeah. So again, it's just the whole idea. Listen, no one wants to tarnish it worse than this. Everyone's kind of waiting. That, that's the problem. Yeah. Really, unfortunately, we used to have a bunch of people who were pioneering and diving through. Now we have a bunch of people kind of standing back and not being the one to want to like get their hands real dirty in the, mix, the muck of it all. So you know, I, like I can't, I can't ex express enough the follow suit of that. Before we didn't want the big guys, you know, we wanted to kind of leave the pioneer shore, but mm -hmm. unfortunately, a bunch of you know bullshit and Tom food has kind of forced that we need someone big to come in to say, hey, here we are. Yeah, there's a look at what's going similar on. Similar to what happened to the internet boom, right? Everybody just put up dot com, raised millions of dollars, you know, the pet stock and all of that, you know, raised money. And after a while, everything got shifted out, but the technology did deliver. I mean, blockchain, in our case, we did something that nobody understands that you might appreciate. We came out with the first rate free poker ever. And people, were going crazy telling me it couldn't be done, it couldn't be done. And we said, yes, it can, because moving the money, money has no cost. And our business model is now subscription-based. One to two dollars a month per player, that's all we need. And we charge money on the tournament. Right. But, but why do they trust you, though? Because well, that, that, that's the point that's brought up right now. Well, I'm going to win, because I trust win is going to give me my $2 million in winnings. 
And so, you know, when I look at like, you know, this whole idea of trust, you say, oh, well, we need a big brand that we can trust. Why? I mean, I think blockchain brings the fact that you don't need to trust anymore. You just, you can just verify on the blockchain. And I think that's a big, the, the big movement that we see with, with issues like this, where it's like, okay, well, we have these old institutions that we just trust, but they violated our trust time and time again. And, and, and they're, you're right, for some reason, people are like, no, I still trust them. Well, it's come a long way. I mean, from 2013, where it was like, you know, it was just for arms and drugs and money. Now it's a lot more mainstream. Now, when my mother you know, calls me and says, "Hey, invest $500 for me in Bitcoin," I know it's the top. She called me right at $18,000. Right? You're, you're buying arms and drugs with 20 years. No. 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 But that's what everybody. That's what everybody associated with in 2013. And it just, it, it has moved a long way. I mean, we're yeah. at a point where Jamie Dimon's talking about it, everybody's talking about it's it. It's a scam, though. I, what I mean more by so, what I'm saying is like your coin, your underlying asset. So say yeah. someone say someone wins $10 million in gambling with a coin, okay? They're like, oh my God, I am the shit. But the market doesn't respond, and that coin, by the time you move that coin out, is right. now worth $2 million. Right, right, right. So I think that's more of the proponent here. The value of the dollar when you gamble online is the value of the dollar. You can go buy the same thing a dollar. And now, granted, inflation changes that, but it's like the same thing. Yeah. I think the problem that people see, and I'm, I, you know, just from this, the research I'm doing, is that's the issue. It's like, okay, well, now I've got these coins. How quickly can I transfer them out, get them to here? Because if you do it with any real big money, it's actually not the easiest thing to move out. We were just having this conversation. We tried to move a $20 million block out. Like, that is not an easy right. thing to do, you know? So when you have real money, real gamblers coming in, big movie money's gonna have to be moved. Maybe it's not one person, but if you've got 25,000 people coming there it is. So the idea is, can you sustain it? You know, can it hold? Right. And can someone manipulate it? See, the thing for me right now, and, and I'm on the other side of it, I like the gaming sector, I like all the sector, because we can manipulate it on either side. Right. You know, so that's the scary part. You got, you have, I mean, just seriously, you have dickheads like me who can come in and see a coin and be like, well, that's open. I'm going to put a huge well, short play in so, so maybe that's where we bring a stable coin in and just squash your, your dreams of being able to manipulate that's the market. Like, uh, that's what they do. I want to play fair. You got to use like stable coins. Right we're building we're building in we're building in a dollar peg into our platform for yeah. people that want to say you know what i want i want my coin to be fluctuating with the market i want to be on a dollar peg and we're going to allow them to do that and it's almost like a currency forward where we cover both sides of it and provide stability so is that very true that's just not when we hope for that like we push like I, i'm a i'm a proponent of regulation and making things that even playing field but until that time you have to understand there's a vast group of people who know just a little bit more than the average bear, and they're going to play this game within the legal bounds. Fair is a word that your parents tell you as a child. It's not reality. You have to understand that first and foremost. The second part is that's just the nature of things. Things will always be abused. It's the same reason I think crypto is not going anywhere. This is my thesis. Is unfortunately not enough people lost enough money. You follow history and assets and new opinions. Yeah. Not, it's coming back for at least that simple reason. We believe not, no other reason. That alone will agree will bring it back. But we need to really understand the stabilization of that before we're going to see anything. You know, like, I mean, you're having headaches with it all the time. Otherwise, these things have already been solved. Right. But I mean, when we talk about stabilization like that in, in a digital asset, you know, I think that. You have uh, multi, you have different camps that, that yeah. want it and people who don't want it. Correct. Like you're saying people will take advantage of the volatility. So when you talk about the trader mentality, yep. you know they want to see that volatility because that's something that they can easily trade against, right? Yes. But then when you talk about uh, like a gaming asset, well, you right. don't want that fluctuating a lot because you want to be able to retain, uh, you know, uh, value in that. You know, when you look on the other side, like we're talking about more of the video game side or, or the blockchain side, which is where I come from. You guys are all the gambler side, yeah. but mm -hmm. in general, you know, uh, you have like some of these NFTs where you know maybe they were sold for a certain amount and then they hit the market and you know depending on what platform they can be traded on how liquid they can actually be or what you know how, what kind of demand they have for them uh that that value is going to change and fluctuate over time and so you know maybe something like that is 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 not necessarily going to translate in every way but it's at least but at least it's, it's maybe not as manipulatable because the, the results of that are all on the blockchain and they're verifiable and it's something you can say, oh, well, I know for sure that this is a rare thing because it only has 100 of these and I can verify that.
you know? Yep. And I think, you know, and maybe speaking for myself, but I, you know, I think that not all traders want to watch the world burn, or per se. I think, I think we all want to watch the world burn, right? But I think, I think we all want the same thing. Just goes up. I mean, I'm on a vacation with my family in the south of France. Who doesn't? Like, I just want to go straight up. Unfortunately, I play with what we have, you know? So it's like, when you leave this world open for people to do this, and their profession is to be able to move a market in one way or the other, well then, you can't be upset with the result that comes right. from it. You know what I'm but, saying? But don't we want to get past that? I mean, well, are we just, I mean, because that's basically the whole paradigm where we're just like, all right, well, we have uh, the traditional markets and people manipulate them, and then we have gigantic economic totally. crashes like we did worldwide in 2008, which was ultimately what spawned Bitcoin and why, the reason why we're all here right now, honestly. Yep. Yep. So, you know, I, I understand that you're right. I think that, that, that you know, if, if we allow ourselves to be put in a system like that where we can't manipulate it, then. We're going to continue, people will continue to be bad actors and continue to do it. And um, I guess my hope is always that blockchain is, is, is going to help build that new paradigm versus trying to be a wedge in an older paradigm where people are still of that same mindset. You know, I agree with you. I just think that's, you know, self regulation has kind of proved to me. <laughs> people are getting used to it. I mean, it, initially, it's hard. <laughs> initially, they're risk adverse, but with time, people are, are understanding that things fluctuate in value. They understand yeah. that blockchain or Bitcoin or all the altcoins also fluctuate. And at some point, people are going to enjoy the, the potential or the opportunity for the coin to not just drop, but also go up. Right, well, digital value of an asset, I think, is not something that most people are comfortable with. Right. You know, when you think about it, like, most of our money is digital anyways, even if you may not realize it, but most money is digital anyways, you know, we have very, you know, little amount of, like, physical paper dollars, and I think those things are going away pretty soon anyways, but, you know, in general, people are not necessarily as comfortable with valuing most things in a digital asset, uh, as a digital asset, and so, <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, most people don't even really know about how like, USD works in general, and so then to be able to throw on like, well, how does Bitcoin work? Why, why does this even have value? You know, that's a, that's a, that's the first thing people say. Well, it's not backed by anything, right? right? That's well, what, what gives the value? Well, it's the same thing. Like, well, why, why is that? Why is a CSGO uh, uh, skin for that rifle just sold for one hundred twenty thousand dollars? Who would pay that? Well, somebody definitely has a puts a value on that, right? Yeah, the dollar is actually a pretty digital. I'll walk into your bank and try to take a few million bucks out. You'll find that it's probably not a few thousand. I mean, these are a few million. Well, I'm just saying that in, yeah. in reality, like the real aspect of it, it's all the trust system. Again, right. it comes down to trust. You trust your banks, the money you're there. You trust the government, the government's not yeah. screwed it up and figured it out. But the problem is, is like right now, again, we're in a trust <laughs> kind of like vacuum. Mm -hmm. Where every time someone is put up to the metric to be trusted, they prove to be untrustworthy. Sure. So until I, I personally think until we've proven that metric, and again, I like the gaming world far better than any other realm to prove that because once again, it takes people's mindset off of the underlying asset right. and more on the idea of like, hey, this is fun again. And like, yeah. honestly, like, that's what it takes for someone to like, bring the fun back. It, it, yeah. Like real talk, like you, right. you never see bad things go down. It's like the fun idea is, needs to be there. Like, yeah. Give me enjoyment of this, and then I'll study into a little bit more. But right now, it's kind of this something your aunt Susie told you last year. Now you lost all your college money, and you're pissed at it. Yeah. Like you want it to be more of a oh look at there something came from this. And I like the idea of gamification, especially with value proposition. Right. You allow someone to play a game, maybe get to a certain level, acquire a set of things, build a secondary market for them. You've now built a whole new arena for people that it's, it's person to person yeah. so like even more than the gambling side i really like the person to person idea yeah. what's going to happen like yeah that, that's actually the point so like who out here owns a, a crypto kitty anybody own crypto kitties yeah come on don't be afraid i know i see the other like yeah. I mean, and so, you know, then, yeah, I think that's one of those things where it's, it's one of those things where, like, hey, maybe, you know, maybe you fall over in the crypto community. But yeah. in general, it, it was a cool, different, unique, uh, unique aspect uh, of, of a, uh, you know, emerging asset class where you can say, oh, well, you know, these ones are, are, are all unique and they have some sort of value attached to them. And we give value to them based upon, uh, you know, the, the value that uh, other people see in them as well. You know, and I think that's what, in general, cryptocurrencies uh, do. Is that you know they they start us thinking about the fact that things can have a digital value, and when we're uh, you know using a gaming platform that you know uh, connects to that in a way that is seamless, right? And we just don't think about it, but we still put a value on top of it. So the same same thing like you're you know. Well, the, the value is, is your community, yeah. is your ecosystem, mm -hmm. and I can see it right in front of my eyes. I mean, you go to the chat rooms, you 
go to the discussion rooms and they're full of very vibrant people and opinions. And really that's what a coin is, right? Just a collection of people that own a piece of digital, uh, a piece of that digital chain. Yes. And if you have something good, then it'll grow. Yeah, it's just that simple. And I, we're, we're growing, we're, we're really at the point where we're, we're gonna go big time with the capital raise, with everything we've done, with the deployments we've had. So really, I think we've come a long way. I mean, it's not perfect. So yeah, I mean, there's all these issues, yeah. but we've come such a long way from 2013 right. that Perhaps I think- drugs, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, no I, I think you're right. I think we've come a long way and uh, we still have a, lot way, a long ways to go in all these areas, but I think sure. gaming in general, well, it's just good. Be it. yeah, entertainment's gonna be the way to be really push the masses towards adopting blockchain. So uh, thank you guys once again for being here and, and hanging out with us, talking a little about gaming and gambling. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for hanging out with us. Really appreciate it. Pound that thumbs up button. You can ask me questions afterwards. Just get a photo real quick, guys. Have a day, guys. Pound that thumbs up button, bro, bro.